Hey, it's Mr. Keys, and today we're going to learn about how to create melodies using a tool that's built into Logic Pro 10 called the Arpeggiator. Most digital audio workstations will have an arpeggiator. Well, what is an arpeggiator? It's a tool that takes MIDI notes for a chord or a single note and plays them one at a time in a certain pattern. Let's see how we can access the arpeggiator. If you click up here, this opens the inspector, or you can press I on your keyboard. Then go down to MIDI effects and click on Arpeggiator and it will open this window right here. Okay, so we're going to skip this top area for the Arpeggiator and we're going to move right down to the Note Order area. The first knob controls the rate of the Arpeggiator. So let's say I'm playing the chord A minor. This controls how fast the notes play. So this will be really slow, this is super slow, etc. I'm going to show you on screen what each of these values represent. So 1 over 1 represents whole notes, all the way to the fastest rate, which is 128 notes, and everything in between. Usually when we're producing, we tend to stay somewhere in the middle. However, it really depends on your overall tempo for the project, and I usually just like to determine it by ear. Our example beat in this project is in 4-4 time, and we have two chords, A minor and E minor, and E minor gets an entire bar to itself. So A minor is going to be 1.5 beats, whereas E minor in this bar is going to be 2.5 beats. And E minor in this bar is just going to be 4 beats. So let's play uh, A minor and E minor with these patterns. So we'll start with a uh, eighth note. So I'm gonna play A minor, and then E minor, and then E minor. Now if I change the rate, you're gonna hear what it sounds like. Minor. This is the variation of E minor. So what the arpeggiator does is it quickly cycles between the notes. And that brings us to the next section of the arpeggiator. This is called the direction control. So right now I have it set to up. So that means it plays these notes in this order from bottom to top and then repeats. This will play it down. So from top to bottom. This will go from bottom to top and then back. This one is going to play bottom, then the top note, then the second highest, then the, sorry, second lowest, then the second highest, then the third lowest, then the third highest, etc. This is going to play the notes randomly. And this is called as played. So let's say I play the bottom, the this, this, and then this in that order. It's going to play it in that order. So it's going to go up. In this case, it's going to go down because I played the top note first. I can play second, first, last, third. Second, first, last, third. I can play second, third, first, last. So whatever order I play the notes and that's how it's going to play it. Let's set this back to up. Variation will change the note order. So for example, if I'm going up, it's going to change the note order slightly. But this is the most important one, I feel. It's called octave range. And if I play three notes and I set it to two, it's not only going to play these three notes, but it's going to play the next three notes up an octave. So we're going to hear six notes in total. I'll play it down here so that you can see. So here you go. bottom, and then up an octave. If I go for three, then it's going to do this first octave, the second octave, and the third octave. Second octave, third octave, and then repeat. And of course with four, same thing. First octave, second octave, third octave, 
fourth octave, repeat. So let's create a little pattern. I'm gonna make this go a lot faster. And now that we have it set to octave range of four, now let's see how that sounds. So we're gonna be playing A minor, E minor. All right, so that might be a little fast, but it has a pretty cool effect. Let's set it to uh, 1 32nd triplets. A minor, E minor. We can play with the note order, the variation, etc. So maybe I'll make it go down. Here we go. That sounds pretty cool. The arpeggiator is a very powerful tool. I hope you learned a lot about how it works. We're going to continue this lesson where we'll learn to explore how to create our own patterns and finish off some of the other features of the arpeggiator.